Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Movie Feuds, the show that lets you decide some of the biggest debates in movie history. Today, Adam and I take on the 1994 action flick, Speed. Does Keanu Reeves hold up? Do you remember how hot Sandra Bullock was? You'll find out. You know this movie's gonna be bad. I mean, what's going on here? Microsoft Word Art? PowerPoint it's font? Like of a PowerPoint presentation. I, I don't understand what's going on. Why is it so bold in 3D? It looks just like- Just calm down, it's fine. It's... It looks like Superman started writing for them. Pop quiz hotshot. What's the best action movie of 1994? Answer, speed. I'm Adam Olger, and today I represent that movie in all its greatness. And I'm Corey Williamson, and I'll be tearing this movie apart. For some reason, Jeff Daniels is in this movie, alongside Keanu Reeves. But you know the movie's gonna suck when the biggest actor or actress to come from this movie is Sandra Bullock. What? I... What? Sandra Bullock is blowing up over the years, and that basically was a jumping off point. Then you mixed in Dennis Hopper, but why did they minimalize his role so much? He's the main villain! He is the main villain, but his on-screen character is only like 15 minutes of the movie. But from a moving car, so far, oh, would that be you, Jeff? You're right about one thing, this is a phenomenal cast. Sandra Bullock uh, kind of showing her true colors is the first time she has a chance to really shine, and she does. What can I do? When that bomb went off? I know. Keanu Reeves actually shows he has some range um, for the first time in his career, and the last. Jack, at my age, you gotta think ahead. When I find you. Pop quiz, hot shot. There's a bomb on a bus. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. What do you do? What do you do? I'd want to know what bus it was. You think I'm going to tell you that? Yes. Ah, <laughs> very good. If by range you mean he moves from one side of the bus to the other, then sure, that is the good hour of the movie, I'll give you that. Everyone on this side of the bus, now! All right. On this side of the bus, All right. Dennis Hopper, for the limited amount of time you think he has, owns this movie. He is a fantastic villain. I put him in a top 20 list any day for speed. Boom, that just happened. Interactive TV, Jack, wave of the future. <laughs> it's hard to fault the characters here. They got thrown into an improbable role with bad decision making all around. Case in point number one. The movie opens in an elevator scene. It's a great scene, it's phenomenal. <laughs> like you're on, you're on pins and needles the whole time. Is this thing gonna fall, is it not? Are they gonna be able to get all these people out you know, in time? I don't know. Jack and Harry sit there trying to analyze this elevator full of bombs. Oh yeah, looks like we've got an elevator full of about uh, 16 people. Uh, let's try to get them off without it dropping 30 stories. Hey, I got an idea. Let's play that terrifying decision-making game. All right, pop quiz. Airport, gunman with one hostage. He's using her for cover. He's almost to a plane. You're 100 feet away. Jack. Shoot the hostage. These guys are just trying to make it through the day. If that means playing a juvenile game, well, well, so be it. Improbable point number two. For some reason, when he finally gets to Howard Payne in the basement of the elevator scene, he lets him escape shortly after shooting his own partner in the leg. But then, when he finally gets out to try to get him again, he blows up the entire building and survives. Yeah. He could have died right there like any other normal movie would have had him do. End of movie, 15 minutes. We don't know what's in this room. For all we know, there's some metal container. He quickly jumped in, took off the bomb vest, chucked it at the door, detonated it, walked out the hole that it made on the other end. Does this seem ridiculously complicated? Yeah, it does, but this is speed. It's all about complications. Another improbable part to this movie is the fact that they're on this bus for a good solid portion of the entire film. However, after hours of consideration on this problem, the best thing that they do is to throw a mechanics jack behind a tow rope and slide it underneath the bus to try to save him? Who thought this was a good idea? Pins and needles. It's all about drama. It's intensity times a thousand. Magnified. Explosions everywhere. Michael Bay would be having wet dreams for months if he would have came up with this plot. Speaking of explosions. So they finally get some of the hostages off the bus. Yep. That's all great. 
Then there's this old lady who just tries to get off the bus, and Howard Payne blows up a little tiny bomb underneath the entrance of the yep. bus. Yep. What was that bomb doing there, and why is there not sprinkled bombs all over the city if that's how easy it is? <laughs> well, yeah. You, you take some liberties with the movie like this, and the writers did take a few, but... Bravo for setting up an extremely annoying character like that woman, and then just taking her out 20 minutes later. Big tip of the hat. Speaking of a character who should have been thrown off the bus a long time ago, you've got Alan Ruck here, aka Cameron on Ferris Bueller's Day Off, with some terrible dialogue throughout the entire movie. We're at the airport. Yeah, so? I already seen the airport. Somebody throw him off the bus already. Emotions are running high in this scene. You know, it's getting to everybody. They could die at any second if they just drop that needle a little bit. So yeah, he's not thinking right when he's saying some of the things he's saying, but I mean, come on, people. They're on a bus. They gotta stay on a certain speed limit. One wrong turn and they're done. This movie is insane. This movie should have been over. But it goes on. So they're, on the, they're in the airport and you know, that whole rickety cart thing we mentioned? Well, they decide to do that again to get Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock off the bus. They leave a rogue bus with bombs strapped to the bottom just to roam freely through LAX airport. Yep. What if that bus would have just happened to run into an airplane full of people? Oh wait, it does! Because saving the lives of 13 people on a city bus is much more important than saving the lives of 250 people on a commercial air. We gotta assume that the cops aren't totally incompetent even though they missed a 50-foot gap in the highway. There's a gap in the road up ahead. It's big. You're kidding! That they would notify the airport police that, uh, yeah, there's a giant bus with a bomb coming. They don't need to show everything. Pop quiz, hot shot! Which movie recycled its own scenes over and over and over again? You mentioned the transportation issues that uh, L.A. apparently has. Later on in the movie, they do the same thing in the subway scene. The track isn't finished, I repeat. Not the track copy. not finished. Do you copy? Not. If someone can hear me. Matt, can you hear me? Try the emergency brake. Track, you need copy. That's it here. Nothing worse. I'm not going to disagree with the fact that this movie's got some Looney Tunes scenarios. I mean, that's, I don't think people come to the movie to just see a bus running down a road going 50 and then the cops stop it. They got to take some liberties, and here they clearly do. But it's exciting, it's nerve wracking. I'm on board this bus, I'm ready to go anywhere it wants to take me. Speaking of that subway scene, they just find out that the tracks are not finished yet and that the whole thing's going to derail, yada, yada, yada. For some reason, Keanu Reeves and, of course, Sandra Bullock sit there in awe, and Annie says, Willem, okay, well undo me and I'd love to go with you. Come on, please. I don't have a key. What? I don't have a key. Ooh, this is awkward. You gotta get off me! You gotta get off me! Oh my god, what are they gonna do? He doesn't have the key, you think the hero's gonna save the day, and now they have to just hope along with the audience. I was just hoping this movie would end. Let's close this up. Speed is one of the last of its kind. Uh, a, a, a dinosaur that aged well. It's got action, it's got some drama, it's got some romance, a little love interest between Keanu and Sandra, and it also started their careers. I can forgive some of the lame jokes and plot points because this movie has a lot more going for it than that. Two hundred and three days without an accident? Come on. Well, we've both said our pieces. Reese's pieces. But we want to hear from you. Leave us a comment below, or if you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment there, and we'll respond back. And then we'll, uh, I guess we'll just close with this beautiful music composed solely for speed. Dun 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 dun. Until next time on Movie Feuds. Dun 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 dun. Ha ha ha! Huh?